the power of pain. How pain can be a great motivator. A lot of us try our best to remove ourselves from the pain. Here, this runner, how many times have some of you, I know some of you, like in my case, if uh, if you see me running, probably because something's about to explode. I don't run a lot. But I do know that when I run, like chasing cattle that get out in the middle of the night, it's a pain. Haven't had to do that in quite a while, praise God. But the power of pain, the old prophet had a, a saying, and others, he coined, he was, wasn't an original uh, uh, quote, but he picked it up from others, said that when the pain of change, or the pain of remaining the same is greater than the pain of change, you'll change. That means when when staying where you're at is going to bring you more pain than getting out of your comfort zone and changing the way you're doing business, the way you're, you're acting in life, whatever, changing your diet and changing your speech, you'll change. And that's what we're going to talk about just briefly today. Not going to be anything real heavy. And off he goes. Deuteronomy 8.18, and I want to look at this real quickly. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth. Now, some people uh, misinterpret that and said the power to create wealth. We don't really create, but we do create. And... There's a fine line there how we do it, but I want to focus on the power here that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. There is a reason. There's two parts to this. We don't want to just focus on the getting, but the reason for the power. Wealth, health, healing is a high energy result. Anything you're going to get from God, anything faith-based, ask, believe, receive, is a high energy result. And if we are not high energy, we are not going to get the result. How are you feeling today? Well, I'm still here. How's it going today? Well, you know what? I'm still, still above the sod. Those are all low energy. And how many of us, I, I've been there, you know, flippantly. I was doing really good. And then you get those other people that you say, how's it going? Man, I am, I am so blessed. If I were any more blessed, I'd have to be 10 people. You know, that kind of get, I'm blessed and highly favored. A lot of people like to spiritually quote, sometimes it comes off as a little fake. But if you can really respond, and you can really tell when you talk to somebody and it's like they're a vacuum, they're a black hole, the energy just whoo, drains. You got to be higher energy. You've got to put on that. I seen a study, Jim Quick, if you want to look it up on YouTube. Uh, Jim Quick did a, a study and a lot of science, a lot of uh, neuroplasticity and, and different things that are going on, physio physiology. Uh, what happens with gratitude? It's, it's a great listen. Uh, if you're having trouble or you're struggling with uh, getting in an attitude of gratitude, let's say, it, to, to coin a phrase, Listen to it, because it's going to show you, Jim does a great job of breaking it down, what happens in your brain when you are grateful, especially if you're writing down 
what things you're grateful for. Some people say, well, I don't know what I got to be grateful for. Low energy, number one. Number two, think about, okay, let, let's do this. If I were to say, I will give you a million dollars if you can tell me five things you're grateful for. Do you think you could come up with at least five things for a million bucks? I'll, I'll bet you it wouldn't take you 30 seconds to come up with something. But yet in our normal everyday lives, how many of us, I don't know what I got to be. I got it so tough. I got it this, I got it that. And so many people get into the drain, the low energy. High energy is not going to flow to low energy. It's going to avoid getting sucked into that trap. You want to attract high energy, whether it's wealth, health, relationships. I don't care what it is. If you're low energy, let's take relationship. My husband is such a jerk. How many times did the old prophet tell us we've got to change the way we we talk about and don't go blabbing to everybody. I know sometimes we like to vent. We like to talk about how bad we got it so we feel better. Uh, I get that. But don't be doing that. Especially to somebody that you love. Because it's no good. It, it, it absolutely does no good. If you got a problem, take it up with them. Try to work through it. But when anybody else is concerned, find something good to say. Go back to how many how many of us had a grandma that said, "If you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything at all." Can you guys remember that? I do. Maybe we ought to get back to that old principle. And that would get all of us and i don't care whether it's your finances whether it's your health whether it's a relationship talking about somebody else or whatever find the good i'm thinking back to philippians 4 whatsoever things are good whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are wholesome think on the and there's a lot more think on these things think it speak it be a high energy person. Where are we at here? There you go. Wake up. Talk too long. So you possess the power. When we talk about the power, and what is the power? The energy source, the creative forces of the Father. Now, He's made everything already. There's nothing that we we see that. Uh, what was that? In first John and John one, what it, he was there in the beginning, and everything that 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 was made was made by him, and through him all things exist. Right? Something I'm paraphrasing again. Uh, so the power is there, the raw material, and that's what I want you to think about. Here's an example: you have the power to walk. Do you know how to make yourself walk? God does. He put all the neuro, all the the nerves, the muscle, the electronic system that has to be in place. Your brain's engaged with all the legs and all the balance and everything else, and you walk. Now you can walk. You can run. You can jog, you can swim, you have the power to do that, but without God, you couldn't. You have the power to talk. Some of us take that liberty to an excess. But think about all the things that have to do. We are the only mammal there's others that have a voice box the birds can sing the cows moo 
the elk, bugle. Uh, but we are the only one that can carry on a conversation. We have the power to communicate. But did that power originate? Okay, you see where I'm going? Thinking, same thing. Some of us need to exercise the power to think a little bit more in our lives. But we have the power to think. Whether we use it or not is sometimes debatable. The power to work. Yeah, same thing. I'll leave that one alone. You get where I'm going with this, right? But it was God that gave us the raw material to do these things. We didn't create anything. They, news flash, they created such and such in a lab. No, they used the raw materials there to do something for good or for evil intent. God's principles give us the raw material to create or destroy. Remember what it says, the power is in the tongue. The life and death is in the power of the tongue. We can create or we can destroy with our words, with our thoughts, with our heart. You have the choice and that choice gives us the power. You have the choice to be low energy, to be negative. You have the choice to be a victim or an overcomer. The choice is yours. Either way you go, God's principles and God's power is there. It's already there. It's waiting. I think back a lot of times, not many of you, I imagine, have ever had the uh, opportunity to go smelt dipping. Smelt are these little bitty fish. They put them in the Great Lakes years ago. They put the salmon in, they, and then they figured out the salmon were, were uh, starving to death, so they had to give the salmon another food source, so they stocked smelt in the Great Lakes. Well, the smelt took, you know, there were... There were a great number of smelt years ago. Now they're kind of dying down. Different things are going on. But we used to we used to go up north in May, and you could look out into the lake and see a big black cloud out there. And I mean like hundreds of yards. You could just tell there was this massive school of these little black fish. And they were waiting for a trigger. Something in one of them would, would trigger them to say, okay, now it's time to run upstream these little bitty streams. I mean, you wouldn't even be knee-deep streams, right? And they would go up and they would spawn in these little streams. But it had to be, there was something that would trigger them. But they would pool. They knew it was time. They knew it was there. And then all at once, boom, here they come. Now, interestingly enough, I had the opportunity on one occasion where same thing. We seen it. We waited for two days. We could see them. We knew they were right there. Of course, you can't go out in a boat and just scoop them up. That's against the rules. They had to come in to the creek before you could uh, scoop them up. And... We were waiting, and we were waiting. Suddenly, they started to run. Here they come, just thick. I mean, you could feel them hitting your boots. Bang, 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 bang. And you were filling buckets up. And then, guess what? A little bitty rain cloud came over. And I swear, it was not more than three or four drops. And those smelts stopped turned around and went right back out to the lake and we were done they never did come back in you could see them out there but they were waiting there was something that little rain cloud stopped the harvest now where am i going with that i think if you have eyes to see and ears to hear you already picked up what that was going we were anticipating we could see the harvest 
the harvest started to come in and then one little bit of negativity, one little raindrop turned it all around. Now, how many of us in our lives have turned around a harvest coming in by those negative words? Don't beat yourself up about it. We have all done it. We're all going to get to heaven and go, I, I was so, 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 so stupid. I spoke and it departed. Now, fortunately, because we know the secrets, there are going to be some of us that will say, yep, see right there. I spoke it and it kept coming and I kept speaking and I kept believing and I kept holding on for weeks, for months, for years. And look at the harvest. That is going to be a victory dance. The principles, principles of God are already in place. He's done and created everything we need for success in our lives, in every area of our life. The power comes when we direct the flow, the power of God. It's what we call faith. The power of pain. Now let's get back to this. The power of pain pushes us past our comfort zone. You're never going to be comfortable. In my life, I would get to certain places where I would feel comfortable. And I don't know if any of you, probably the younger crowd didn't see it, but I know the older crowd will, will get it when I say this. Remember Charlie Brown? That old sister of his would grab that blanket or whatever and jerk it out from underneath of him and he would go ass over apple crate. I mean, he was just flying in the air on his head. That's what happens to us sometimes. We, we get the rug jerked out from underneath of us. We've got to get past that. We've got to get past the point where, where we're worried about our fears. We're worried about being too comfortable. But that happens to me in my life on occasion. I get to a point where I start to get comfortable. God says, no, 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 no. enough of that. Let's go a little more. Time to grow. And it's happened, and it's happened, and it's happened. And that's the ch time that we're in right now. You know, I'm not comfortable. I'm not. I'm pushing. There's something going on. We're going in a different direction. Be careful when you get comfortable. Because you get complacent. Apathy sets in. You, you just don't. You go through the routine and you don't even think about it. So get past your comfort zone, past your fears. When you're in enough pain that you know you got to do something, you don't care about the fear that's facing you that might have held you back. And that's a good thing. Because greater is he that's in us that is in the world or resides between our ears, right? The power of pain will also push us past our perceived reality. And I, did you pay attention to that perceived reality? Our reality, past, present, and future, we went through this last week, is perceived. How do we perceive it? Now, I know things happen to all of us. I remember walking with Prophet, and he had asked me about my childhood and family and everything else, and I told him what went on in our family. And he looked at me, and he said, you know, I had an inkling in the spirit, but he said, there's some people that never get past 
a fraction of what you've been through. And I said, yeah, but there's a lot of people that have had it much, much worse, too. But that's all perceived. It doesn't excuse it. But it does bring us to a point where we can change the way we look at it now. We can learn from it, use it to bless other people, and move on and grow from our future, not our past. See last week's installment if you want more on that. Pain of rejection. How many of us worry about what other people might think? Worried about what they'll say? Or maybe I'll fail. That's, that's a fear. Fear of failure. Fear of missing out. Uh, all, all sorts of fears. But the fear of rejection is a real thing. We're a social creature by nature. God made us that way. How about the pain? We get past the pain of remaining the same. That's kind of what I opened with, with that uh, quote from the old prophet. We got to get past that pain of remaining the same, the comfort type of stuff. Now, some of the power that's given to us we have the power to believe, number one. We can have faith or we can have doubt. But we can't have them in the same room. I can't have light and dark in the same room. Either the light's on or the light's off. Which is it? You can have dim light, but you still got light. The power to believe is your choice the power of perception how do you perceive what's going on that's what we talked about last week when we look at our past do we look at it as a blessing as a learning tool as something that we can use to help others and grow from it what is our perception? Are we dwelling in the past? Or are we looking to the future? The power of persistence. You know, in Ephesians, I believe it says, having done all therefore stand. And when I was going through um, a rough time, our family was, our daughter was in the hospital. She was on ventilator. A very serious accident. I believe that God could raise her up off that bed at any given moment. A creative miracle. And while she was miraculously healed, it took time. And I had to stand. And I had to make sure that every day I saw her walking out of that hospital. I saw her family in the future. At that time, she was what? 12, 10, 12? I don't know. I can't remember. Guys are bad. Now, my wife would tell you exactly. I can't. It's the guy thing. But the power of persistence. Now, the power of purpose you have to have a purpose. A purpose is going to give you the, the fortitude to be persistent. You're not going to give up when things get tough. When you want to give up. When it hurts. When you don't think you're making any progress. When things don't seem to be getting any better. Purpose will keep you in the game. At the crossroad of passion and purpose, you've got to find that sweet spot. That's where this thing will come together. I may have a passion for making fruit pies. I love fruit pies. Don't, don't make me a birthday cake. I'm that guy that wants a birthday pie, right? 
But is that my purpose? Is that what I have been given from the Lord God? Can I do it? Yeah, I can make a pie. But it's not my passion. And it's certainly not my purpose. And if it's neither one of those, why am I doing it? We got too many distractions in this world today that get us away from our true purpose, our true calling. And finally, the power to serve. All of these things can be put together and it's absolutely for nothing if we can't use the gift and the purpose and the passion to bless others. You've got to have that power to serve. You've got to go into this with the mind of how can I bless someone else? How can I help alleviate some pain in someone else's life? And while doing that, you'll get blessed. I think back to Solomon when he prayed, Father, give me wisdom so that I can know how to lead these people. And again, I'm paraphrasing. And God said, you know what? Because you've spoken it, I will do this. And because you've not asked for this, I will add all this on to you. Now, if you don't know exactly what it says, look it up. You can go to the computer. For those of you that are following Facebook and every place else, go in and just Google the prayer of Solomon, right? And it'll pull it up. But that's where we need to be, brothers and sisters. Father, give us wisdom to be a blessing. We thank you for all the power that you've given us. We thank you that you have given us the power. And we've got to remember, most importantly, do not forget that ever. Look back in Deuteronomy. God's very explicit. When you get into the promised land, when you get the ridges, when you get that stuff, don't forget where it came from. And with that, folks, I'm going to go ahead. I think that was the last slide. Let's check here. Yep, sure enough. Escape, stop, share. There we go. So with all that being said, Thank you. Uh, I'll let you go. Enjoy the rest of your Sabbath. I know I'm going to put my feet up. Uh, we got a long way to go, but we're we're a lot further down the road than we were. Praise God. And uh, I thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for for paying attention because this is life and death. It really is. Let's go ahead and be clo closed out in prayer here. Father, thank you so much for everything that you've given. Father, right now, I command a blessing on everyone that has heard this message just now and those who will hear it in the future. Father, that would bless them and it would change the way that they speak and think and the attitude of their heart. Father, I thank you for it. And I thank you for your power. And Father, as, as a stamp that this message was from you, Father, I command creative miracles. Father, for that, that person that's having a neck, right there where your shoulders meet your neck, somebody's got a pain. Father, in the name of Yeshua, I command 
healing. I curse the condition that's come into that body. And I command full healing. And there's someone else that's got some fluid build up around their heart. Father, in the name of Yeshua, I command that that fluid would be released to a safe level, to the level that it should be. And Father, the conjection would go. I curse the condition that's come in and caused this problem. And I command a full healing, full restoration in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Just check and see if there was anything else. If you need a touch, grab a hold of it right now. Say yes and amen. I've got this. I've got that. Believe and receive in Yeshua's name. Be blessed. We'll get together next week. See what God's dropped into the old boy's bucket. Shalom until then. Don't forget, if you need to get a hold of us, Ephraim International Ministries, where is it? Over here. Yeah, right down there. <laughs> it's kind of tough. I see it on the screen here, and I can't point to it uh, the way the cameras work. But Ephraim International Ministries .com, uh, you can send in. You can get a hold of us, of course, on Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube. You can leave a comment here, and uh, we'll be sure to get back with you and pray and believe with you in Yeshua's name. Amen? Amen. Shalom.